My dear brothers and sisters, I guess you have heard the saying, you are what you eat. We have heard doctors saying this, nutritionists saying this. We have heard uh, a lot of people who are knowledgeable about uh, human health saying, you are what you eat. There is even a book with the title, you are what you eat. So the book talks about various kinds of food and the kind of food that a person should eat and the kind of food that a person should avoid. So there are certain foods for certain persons. Uh, the food for children may not be suitable for adults. I mean, there are foods that children would need to grow. But those kind of food may not also be good for adults. But the bottom line of it is that what you eat goes a long way to determine who you become or determine your health status. What you eat can either be poison or it can be nutrition. So it can either help you grow or help you die. Basically, our food makes us. Today, our readings present a particular type of food that is very unique. This is a food that we eat and automatically we become the food. And <laughs> the food takes us into itself. What am I talking about? The Holy Eucharist, the body and the blood of Jesus, God's greatest gift to mankind. Jesus Christ left us with his own flesh and blood. And he meant what he was saying. Jesus was not speaking figuratively when he said that those who eat my flesh will live because of me. The bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. So when we eat Jesus in Holy Communion, we become part of Jesus, so to say. With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is the 28th day of April 2023, and it is Friday of the third week of Easter. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 20. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 117, while our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 6, verses 52 to 59. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he journeyed, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul! Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, 
he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias! And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and took food and was strengthened. For several days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and in the synagogues, immediately he proclaimed Jesus, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples, for his merciful love has prevailed over. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Oh, praise, go into all the world and preach the gospel. For his merciful love has prevailed over us, and the Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, Abides in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh 
and drinks my blood as eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. This is said in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He who does not eat my flesh, does not drink my blood, has no life in him. That is just the truth. If there is something that is keeping you away from communion, that thing is also keeping you away from life. We need to value and appreciate God for the gift of his body and blood that he left for us in the Holy Eucharist. Jesus Christ said it very plainly. The people were wondering, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They did not understand. And they were already getting pissed off with Jesus. But Jesus emphasized what he meant again, that it is my flesh that is the life of the world. And when you eat my flesh, I will be abiding in you and you will be abiding in me. That is why it's called communion. It's it's, it's something that joins us, that that grants us a common union with God. So we are united with God. Because we are eating his flesh, we are drinking his blood. This may sound cannibalistic, but it is not. Because we are eating and drinking the body and the blood of Jesus, not in a bloody manner, but in an unbloody manner. We are eating and drinking the body and the blood of Jesus in holy communion, under the appearance under the appearance of bread and wine. And you see, when we eat the body of Christ and drink his blood, Jesus Christ begins to live in us. That is why when Saul was on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians over there, Jesus Christ appeared to Saul on the way. Jesus Christ did not say, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting Christians? No. Jesus Christ said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? In other words, Jesus Christ felt the pain of the Christians that Saul was persecuting. What other protection do you need again from your enemies? What protection do you need other than being in communion with our Lord Jesus Christ by receiving his body and blood. If the saying is true that you are what you eat, it also means that if you eat and drink the body and the blood of Christ, you are Jesus. Jesus is in you. This is the reason why We must be careful to receive the body and the blood of Christ in a good state. Do not eat and drink unworthily, as St. Paul will tell us in his letter to the Corinthians. Make sure that you are in a state of grace. In other words, that you are not aware or conscious of any mortal sin. Strive every day to be in a state of grace, 
so that you can receive the body and the blood of Christ worthily, that Jesus may dwell in you. And as much as we receive protection from Jesus because we are part of his body, since we share in Holy Communion, we must also bear in mind that after receiving Communion, and yet we still go back to our sinful ways, it is very heartbreaking, it's very disappointing, it's very painful. It's just like a man who has married a wife, only for the woman to be going out to other men. I mean, marriage already connects them together. I gave an example of the wife. The same thing with the man. It's painful after you are married, then you are going out to another woman. You are breaking the marriage bond. I mean, you are, marriage already makes the husband and wife man. Husband and wife. It cannot be husband and husband, though. It can never be wife and wife. Husband and wife, male and female. It does the way God created us. Do not mind the modern madness. This is an era of madness. And it's only a matter of time before even the advanced world. Perhaps maybe they're already on their point of destruction. And they know that they are already going to be destroyed. That is why their society has come down to this level where they are trying to force our children into, you know, I, I, I saw a video, books for children, teaching children about gay, teaching children about gender, gender queer, teaching children about all these things. I mean, it is that bad, but that is a distraction. If we have received Holy Communion and we are still going back to our old ways, it is disappointing. It is painful. It is not something that we should do. Let us strive every day to be in a state of grace, to receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, know that you receive life, you receive health, you receive freedom, you receive peace. You receive everything that your soul desires. Nothing in this world can satisfy you as much as being in Jesus and Jesus living in you. May God bless his words in our hearts. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Do have a wonderful weekend ahead. God bless you.